So we are going to have a really long and rough couple of months ahead when it comes to COVID-19. And as bad as it is now, it could get even worse. I mean, we are seeing almost 200,000 new cases per day. We've surpassed 250,000 deaths in the United States due to COVID-19. And even though the virus is spreading more and more, Americans are disregarding, you know, social distancing protocols. They are traveling in larger numbers for the holidays. And when governors take action and issue more lockdown orders, such as in Oregon, residents are defying said orders and they're protesting outside of the governor's residence. And on one hand, you know, it's easy to be angry at these folks for not wanting another lockdown. But at the same time, the federal government hasn't taken any action. So governors, they don't have the power of the purse that Congress has. So without another federal stimulus, if a governor locks down, which is the right thing to do to mitigate the spread of the virus, then you're just harming small businesses. So it's this really horrible situation that we find ourselves in where there's no federal money that states have to assist them with this lockdown. But you have to lock down, otherwise more people will catch the virus and die. But yet, more small businesses will go bankrupt, people will suffer. It's a disaster, and we're not even thinking right now about what's going to happen January 1st, when the moratorium on evictions expires. Is Trump, a lame duck president, going to want to reissue that? How many people are going to face eviction? How many more people will go hungry before the holiday season? Like, it's it's genuinely depressing to think about all of this. And to make matters worse, you know, you have politicians like Congresswoman-elect Marjorie Taylor Greene irresponsibly post selfies of herself bragging about how they're not wearing masks in Georgia. Uh, we're still seeing the viral videos of Karens getting kicked out of Costco's for refusing to wear masks. And it just proves that people are incredibly selfish incredibly selfish and not only that that our government just doesn't care about us the united states government which is the richest country in the world responded to this pandemic as you'd expect a failed state to respond to it i mean think about how insane it is that with all of the economic ruin that this pandemic has caused americans got one payment just one of twelve hundred dollars they expect americans to survive on that so it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Having said that, though, I do think that there is some room for optimism. We are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel because we have two vaccines that are very effective. And on top of that, the University of Oxford found that AstraZeneca's vaccine is very effective at stopping someone from contracting COVID-19. And on top of that, the FDA has authorized Regeneron's antibody cocktail for emergency use on high-risk patients with mild to moderate symptoms. And the government is apparently subsidizing some of the treatments, so that way there's no out-of-pocket costs. I think that the devil is in the details there. But, you know, it's getting worse. But at the same time, we're starting to see a glimmer of hope with regard to vaccines and therapeutics. So the question is... You know, as it gets worse and we start to see, you know, uh, a cure basically in the form of, va of a vaccine, how long is this going to go on for? I mean, everyone has quarantine fatigue, myself included. Nobody likes wearing masks. We just begrudgingly do it because we, we want to protect others. So how long until things start to get back to normal? And uh, there is some encouraging news with regard to when we might start to see some normality again as the pandemic goes away uh but there's a lot of caveats so according to one vaccine expert it could be as early as may of next year that things could get back to normal meaning we could actually have a relatively normal summer so as the guardians joanna walters explains as the number of covid 19 cases in the united states passed 12 million the trump administration's vaccine program advisor predicted that life in america could be back to normal around may of 2021 as immunization is set to begin the note of optimism came even as millions of americans were expected to travel for the upcoming thanksgiving holiday this week and many appeared to be ignoring warnings from 
health officials about furthering the spread of the infectious disease. Monsef Slaoui, chief scientific advisor of the government's Operation Warp Speed vaccine development and distribution program, which involves the military and the private sector, as well as government health experts, said that pending regulatory approval for the first vaccine means that first Americans could be vaccinated outside of clinical trial by mid-December. And Slaoui said that if the vaccination distribution and immunization plan goes well, enough Americans should be vaccinated by May or something like that of 2021 to allow life to go back to normal. The first application to the U.S. government for vaccine approval was made on Friday by the pharmaceutical team of Pfizer and its partner BioNTech. The Food and Drug Administration regulatory body is scheduled to hold a key meeting on December 10th that could award the team emergency authorization for the vaccine. By December 11th or 12th, I'm hopeful the first people will be immunized across the United States in all states, Slaoui told CNN's State of the Union politics show on Sunday morning. The administration plans to vaccinate 20 million people in December and another 30 million per month thereafter. Healthcare workers and the most vulnerable populations, such as residents of nursing homes, are expected Expected to be the first in line. Slawi said that with the first vaccines, the U.S. pharmaceutical firm Moderna is expected to apply for regulatory authorization soon on its vaccine, need to be given to at least 70% of the U.S. population for true herd immunity to take place. So if he's right, and you know, we could have 70% of the population vaccinated by May, this is this is really good news. Um, I will admit, though, you know, uh, I'm not that optimistic and there's a million different caveats. And when Dr. Fauci was asked about this timeline, he was a little bit more skeptical because the next task that we're going to have as a country is getting people to take vaccines. Because as we know, there's been increasing anti-vax sentiment in this country. Although when it comes to COVID-19, it doesn't seem to be as prevalent as normal vaccines, and Gallup shows that support for a COVID-19 vaccination is at 58%, meaning that 58% of Americans would take a vaccine. And when you control for party affiliation, unsurprisingly, more Democrats would take the vaccine than Republicans. So if it is the case that 58% of Americans in total take this vaccine, uh, you know, when you factor in that, as well as all of the people who have antibody responses generated from having COVID-19, we could be close to 70% to reach herd immunity. But it's going to be tough uh, to convince people because Joe Biden will be president and Trump supporters will be more conspiratorial and think that it's unsafe. It's going to be, I think, a really huge struggle. So I I'm kind of more in line with what Dr. Fauci says in that it's probably a little bit too optimistic to think May is when things are going to return to normal. But to me, I take this as sometime in 2021, things will return to normal, most likely. Um, now, there's there's some reason to want Donald Trump to take credit for the vaccine, at least some credit for the vaccine. Because if Donald Trump doesn't give it his stamp of approval, will his supporters take it? We need people to take the vaccine in order to have herd immunity, in order to protect ourselves and the world from the virus. So just getting people to take this vaccine is going to be tough in and of itself. Now, the good news is that if a lot of people don't want to take it immediately, uh, you know, others will have access to the vaccine, assuming it's affordable uh, or <laughs> accessible at all. Who knows? That's a different story for a different day uh, or discussion for a different day, I should say. But I mean, look... We're going to have to wait and see, but, um, you know, there, there is, I think, cause for optimism. There's a glimmer of hope. We're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel just a little bit. But to get to that point where we see, you know, a more normal country and world again, what we have to go through to get there is going to be tough. We still have to take precautions. And I mean, given how Americans have responded, they're probably going to celebrate Thanksgiving. A lot of people, at least as if there isn't a pandemic, which is worrisome because, you know, it's not like these celebrations, you know, will occur in a vacuum. Society doesn't exist in a vacuum. So if you, you know, uh, travel and you see your family and you contract COVID-19, you could give that to others, your grocery store clerks and whatnot. So it's just, it's exhausting. Um, and this is just, it's going to take a long time, but I think that, if there's some cause for optimism, we should try to hang on to that because it's going to be a really, really rough couple of months.